Yep, let's uh, let's do it. Let's talk about earnings then, because this week was very much a kind of earnings week. It was big tech. Um, well, I mean, everything's tech, right? But this was kind of big companies and big tech. Let's kick ourselves off with uh, Apple, because this is one that I own in my portfolio. Um, and on face value, this is not a terrifically inspiring set of earnings, but I think there's more going on under the surface. The stock fell probably around 3%. I mean, it had a little bit of a jump going into earnings, to be honest, but it dropped 3% coming out of them, which was uh, enough to put it behind. And it's now finished the week um, within about 0.5% uh, of where it was pre earnings here down three percent on the week or so and it's not that difficult to see why if you keep in mind this is a stock trading around a price earnings ratio of 30 uh, if you believe in the law of large numbers and i'm not saying you shouldn't uh it has to apply here if it applies anywhere uh, with that size of market cap that it has so revenue for the quarter came in at 119.6 billion which was a mighty two percent increase uh, that's the kind of headline number here, and it doesn't look great. So you're paying 30 times earnings for something that's managing 2% revenue growth. Uh, that should probably give you pause at face value, but let's dig in a little bit further. Uh, there's more bad news. Um, China, which is 20% of Apple's rough uh, total market, or there or thereabouts, probably slightly less than that now. Sales were down 13%. In some ways, that shouldn't be a huge surprise to anybody. Uh, China's iPhone ban, quote unquote, it's not quite as straightforward as that, but China has been uh, freezing out iPhone usage or winding back iPhone usage or, let's say, disincentivizing iPhone usage uh, a fair bit just lately. So you wouldn't have expected a huge rise in that. Uh, is 13% higher or lower than the decline you might have expected? I'm not sure. Uh, iPhone revenues were up about 6%, which is meh, fine. Uh, and the products division's revenue was, I mean, it's as close to flat as we ever call anything. It was up 0.1 of a percent. Um, I suppose strictly that's up. But I mean, if we round anything to zero, we're rounding that to zero. So call it flat. So plenty there to be uninspired by, which is probably why the stock is down uh, a little bit. But beneath the surface, when you get past the kind of revenue and the sales lines, things start looking a little bit better. So Operating income came in at $54.9 billion for the quarter, which is 9% growth, and earnings per share came in at $2.18, which is 16% growth. I think PE ratio of 30, earnings growing at 16%, but well, now we get to a kind of peg ratio of about 2. Can you find a lower one? Almost certainly yes. Um, is it a terrible one? I don't think so. So uh, what's making the difference here between that lousy top line and this kind of more impressive bottom line? Well, the answer is... Predictably enough, Apple services division. So stuff like Apple Music, the App Store, and so on and so forth. Revenue there came in at 23 billion. So 23 billion, by the way, as a percentage of 119.6 in total. That grew at 11%, uh, and that's been growing pretty well and continues to be to grow. It seems to be the kind of growth story that Apple uh, shareholders, I think, I'm one of them, but uh, I think I can speak for other ones too, must be hanging uh, their hat or at least some part of their anatomy on. So the thing's been growing at an average of 22% per year over the last decade. That's pretty impressive. And that kind of growth is very helpful because that growth comes with a 73% gross margin. Uh, the services division doesn't have big products to manufacture. It doesn't have much in the way of cost of goods sold. Uh, so 73% gross margins there versus 39% um gross margins in the products division the, even if revenues stay where they are if you can find more of that coming through from your uh high margin services business less of it coming through from your low margin revenue business if you can offset one with the other and set offset them the right way round uh here you can achieve what is at the bottom line i think only describable as growth this is a thing that's routinely lost on the motley fool uh guys in my view that not all growth is top line growth. Uh, we can all read a top line going across and there is something important about the top line because it's the hardest line to fake, basically. It's very difficult to kind of start fudging numbers when they're coming in just at the level of sales. You either sold a thing or you didn't. Uh, you either recognize it as revenue or you don't. Uh, there is no depreciation at that point. There is no um, taking views on this, that or the other. But effectively, uh, what we have there is what I think is a decent um, set of figures there. Services I'd like to see growing a little bit better, um, and that would help push the bottom line higher here. But 16% earnings growth on um, 
Uh, price earnings ratio of 30. It's not huge. It's not massively inspiring, but it's okay, I think. Um, Steve, you're not an Apple shareholder, but did you have any thoughts on this? Um, it, this wasn't really a particularly bad report, I didn't think, Steve. This was a very much uh, sort of a company that's potentially just still suffering from a little bit of growth pulled forward and just sell a tape on there. The fact that they're struggling with China at the moment is uh, um, being used as a bit of a whipping boy uh, in potentially a political uh, sort of to and fro here. Um, and uh, yeah, I would expect that to resolve itself at some point. The, the miss on China revenues is about two point six billion. Uh, you you know you add that onto the top line, and we're, we're nil, still not talking about massive growth here, Steve. So it's uh, it would be unfair to to say that that was you know one of the, the you know the the, the main driving factor. Uh, they missed on um, consensus on Mac, iPad, and wearable sales. Um, but only marginally 1.4%, 0.3 and 0.3%. Uh, services missed on 0.9%. But again, that's only a, you know, a few hundred million miss here. Um, this is a company that's doing fine at the moment. My, I guess my major issue is the same issue that I've had with Apple for a while. I'm, and I'm waiting for the next best thing. And I'm really toying with the, or stuck with the idea in my brain that the uh, Vision Pro is going to be this next best product for for Apple. Uh, I think this generation might might not be, um, and it depends on whether uh, Cook has the sort of stopping power that Jobs had to kind of force through change by keep iterating on the product and keep making it better, even if the sales aren't aren't particularly as good as they uh, as they wanted to. Apple's used to like like you you know really really instant success with it with its products so it'll be uh with with its more recent products sorry not not with its other products but uh, i don't think at three and a half grand the vision pro is going to be an instant success because for some people it'll be a case of like you know buy a car or buy some ski goggles um and i saw them on cnbc the other day and when you take away all the glossy marketing um sort of pictures that are that are you know apple are supplying to people when you actually see them in the flesh they do look quite ridiculous um so yeah i don't think that's going to be the next sort of driver of or not at least not in the you know not in the immediacy it's not going to be the big driver of you know apple's next flywheel but it is nice to see them improving margins all over the place growing that bottom line uh obviously that that huge um cash pile that gets stuck into buying back their stock every so often and, and paying that tiny dividend um you know that that's going to be replenished by the bottom line and, and not necessarily the top line growing so um yeah it's a it's a fine stock um i still struggle with why i need to own it at the moment at the sort of prices uh it it trades at I think there's probably better options out there for me, Steve. But, I mean, if somebody wants to tell me that they own it because they think Vision Pro is going to be the next best product, I would say not in my catalogue, but who knows? It, it, it could be. And, and and if you think that, it's probably an okay buy here. Yeah, I'm not a very good barometer for this kind of thing because I have been largely sceptical of a large number of Apple products and thought, I don't know why I... I don't see these things work. The iPad is a great example, right? I viewed it as a kind of combination, a cross between a phone that's too big to fit in your pocket and a laptop that's not big enough to watch anything on uh, meaningfully and thought, this is never going to catch on. Um, and I was straightforwardly wrong about this. I was having these thoughts, by the way, way before I was investing or even thinking about investing in um, Apple. But... Apple's ability to get products right is is really interesting. Scott Galloway describes them as the archetypal second mouse, i.e. second mouse gets the cheese here. In behind Meta, I, I really struggle to see it with the Vision Pro thing. Um, I get the point about Apple um, being a, a second mouse here. And I think I sold Meta shares quite a while ago because they were lobbing too much money into my, in my view, into this Reality Labs headset thingy. Uh, we'll come back to them as we'll come back to small dividends in a little bit. But um, I would trust uh, Apple and Tim Cook more than I would trust uh, Meta, as it was then, still it wasn't Facebook back then, uh, Meta and Mark Zuckerberg um, to have a better, to be able to make this product work, not necessarily make a better one uh, than 
uh, meta, but to make this product work with consumers better. Do I think they'll do it? I'm really agnostic uh, here. And to your point, I am not buying this stock at these prices. I have what I think are better options as well. But I do own it. I have owned it from before. uh, And I don't anticipate getting rid of it, not just because I've elected on a principle for this year of stop selling stuff and stop churning stuff all over the place. And what else would you buy? Well, I guess there's a good candidate for what else you might buy coming up. But I think Apple-wise, I think I agree with more or less all of that. I was happy enough with this report. Um, It is a pet hate of mine when YouTubers who see basically things getting lit on fire in front of their eyes say, yeah, I'm I'm pretty comfortable here. This isn't, uh, I wasn't wrong. Uh, And this doesn't count as debt and and all these other things. And I sort of think, okay, uh, you are basically telling yourself this here. I don't think I'm in that situation with Apple yet. And I try and be reasonably um, sincere when I talk about this and or say predictions and stuff. I don't pretend like mine are right when they were, uh, when they weren't basically. So, with that in mind, um, I wait and see on Apple. You've been watching a segment from the Playing Footsie Show, brought to you in association with our favourite broker, Trading212. For the full version of the show, check us out on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you get your podcasts. And if you check us out on the link in description, there's a free share in it for you with Trading212 if you open a new account. Just use the code FTSE so they know we sent you.